the company of curlews. Chapter 8 Falling Down Spies and Seals. In my teenage years, I learned to swim in the river. Thought I needed to swim like a salmon to catch a salmon. Not a nice experience, mind, taking a dip down the quay, stinking with sewage. I was stupid when I was younger. Think of the fishes thinking, Bedwyr, I told my nine-year-old grandson. They ain't going to swim in a straight line, are they? The thoughts were that of my grandfather. Now it was my turn to hand the knowledge down. I showed him the basics of the craft. I put the safety rope on him, just like when I was a boy. Showed him the skill of the net and the paddle, the lead line and the cork line. I know he was only nine, but I, I wanted him to get toughened up. Sometimes, I'd say... Once you catch a fish, it'll try to get away. It'll be flapping about and slippery and won't want to get in the boat with you. You might not be able to hold on and the fish and all your dreams will slip through your fingers. They'll get away from you, boy, if you don't find a way to hang on. Well, he looked at me as if I was talking double Dutch. He was coming on nice in general, always asking me the right questions, and then it seemed as if he got bored and he went dull on me. I'd be telling him how he would have to learn from his mistakes. Your bad nights will teach you as much as your good nights, as long as you think about where you went wrong. What could you do to make things better the next time? And he'd say, why... I suppose I hadn't thought it through. I didn't have all the answers. A bit clumsy like that. I couldn't always remember what to say. Why? he'd ask again. Well, I lost my temper, I did. Raised my voice. I didn't have the patience. Just listen, will you, Bedwyr? Don't ask so many damn questions, man. He started a blub. His behaviour reminded me so much of my brother Anthony. Come on, I'd say, don't cry now, enough for this fishing. I tell you what, see if you can tackle me. Go back there now and come at me. He loved his rugby. He ran at me, banged into me, and I fell down easy like a sack of spuds. I made a meal of it. He laughed and I laughed with him. Come on, I'd say, let's go to the pub. Have a drink with your mam. I'll get you a weak shandy, boy. He held my hand and we walked up to town. In the traditions and beliefs, some people may say superstitions of Carmarthen Corrigal fishing is that the seal of the river carries the ghost of one of the old Corrigal men in his bosom. And when that seal dies, the spirits of the two go together to heaven. And the years pass and we all get older. And the day came when a man I loved died. Owen Purti was ninety-one years of age and I was nearly fifty. You were lucky to have him so long, they said. It's a blessing. Pneumonia got him in the end. Something's going to get you for sure. The Germans didn't get him in the Great War. The bullets and the shells of the Somme. Nah. Worked hard all his life. Fishing on the river and down the mines digging coal when the fishing was out of season. I wouldn't have done it, mind. Bloody hard work. And in any case, I was too big to go down the pit. He reckoned he did his bit in the other war, too. Aye. 
the Coracle boys were always told by the authorities to be vigilant on the river. Spies, he told me. The captain of the home guard said that the river could quite easily be a route that the spies would take under the darkness of the night and to look out for the Bosch U-boats. They could infiltrate the countryside. Sounded like something Captain Mainwaring would have said. So, my grandfather said, I went out fishing every night on army business. <laughs> Never found any spies, mind, but I kept looking every night. When I was older, he told me that I was not to breathe a word to anyone, mind. I don't know why, but that's what he said. Why, I said. Just listen to me, boy, he said calmly. Boy, he called me, mind. I was in, in my forties. During the war, he had been trained in the home guard. If the Germans had, if the Germans had invaded, he stuttered. Oh dear, he'd had a few when he was telling me this, mind. Three sheets to the wind he was. I wouldn't have been able to fight. I can help people, he said. First aid and all that. But I could never kill someone or anything, to be honest. I know I kill fish, but I need the fish. Feed my family. He stopped. You could see him pondering. I think I'm a pacifist, he said. If push came to shove and I threatened my family, that would be another story. He mulled over what he was saying. Who threatened the family, I said flippantly. The fish. The fish were going to attack Nana. What do you want about you drunken fool? I laughed, but he didn't. Don't let yourself down, Jack. He paused, obviously thinking of the past. I could have saved so many more, but they didn't give me time. When you went over the top, you had to leave those who were dying. You had to keep going. The drink had made him fuddled. He rambled on, not making any sense. Ach, away with you, he said to me. The night before we buried him and said our goodbyes, we went out on the river, took his old coracle and burnt it in a ceremony he would have been proud of. We didn't wait for the owl to screech like he told us. We just lit it, sat, and stared into the flames with our memories of the great man. Dada always talked of how his grandfather remembered old coraclers actually being set alight inside their coracle, being cast adrift down river. I wondered if he'd watched too many Kirk Douglas movies. Have you seen the Vikings? I felt maudlin. So sad when Branwen died that I let her down, but now with my dada's death, it was a different grief. I was agitated by his death. My whole body felt on fire. Angry that I was still here. The people I loved were dying all around me. My brother, my mother, my wife, my nana, my dada. There's no need to take a gun, said Uncle Di. John Bach had said there were seals in the river the night before. They had got caught in the net stealing their fish. They're not having my fish, I said. They'll be sorry for the day they messed with Jack Francis. You've got to show kindness, says Di. My father taught me that the seal needs to eat as well. Did you feel that, Di? Pull it in! It's the seal! Pull hard, man! I put my paddle down and reached behind for my gun. It's a seal, Di, like I told you! And in its mouth it had the biggest salmon I ever seen. No! screamed Di. 
That's mine, I shouted, and shot the seal in the chest. Blood spurted over my face, and by the time I wiped it off, the seal was gone, and so was my fish. Standing on the moonlit river bank is a curlew calling out at me. I turn and look in its direction. Ah, to hell with you and all! <laughs> <laughs>